Hey, welcome back to our deeper dive, uh, our look at trauma and um, what what shows up for us. You know, Rachel, in, in the twenty six minutes with uh, we were you were talking about you know uh, how it gets in the way of manifesting uh, things, you know, be it money or a job or or health or whatever. And I, I want to share. Um, a small T trauma and how it played out in this gentleman's life. And I might have shared this story with you before. So, um, and it was through Landmark, which we were talking about, right? So we he had done Landmark. And the he had a pattern in his life where whenever he got money, and he 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 was a pretty successful business owner. So he he had times where he could amass like a lot of money fairly, fairly quickly. But whenever he got money, the next thing that happened is he lost it. Mm -hmm. And he traced it back. And this is going to sound really like, oh my God, yeah, and it, it, it'll make sense. But it's like, wow. Okay, so he traced it back to when he was a kid. And his mom would, uh, on his birthday, make a birthday cake. And something that some people did back then is they put lucky pennies in the cake. And I think he, I don't know if he digested one or whatever, but he got sick as a kid eating his birthday cake. He might have oh, digested. Wow. And he, he taught, so that was traumatic, right? Mm -hmm. During his birthday, it's a time of joy and abundance and gifts and chocolate cake. And, and yet, you know, his mom, I, you know, all, meaning well, put pennies in the cake and he would get, he got sick. And so whenever he got money, he, something would happen. He'd get sick or, 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 or some other thing would mm -hmm. play out. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Is that something that, yeah, that's how trauma can play out. And if we don't sort mm -hmm. of address that issue and say, okay, I, I let that issue go. I'm okay with it now. I learned the lesson. Yeah, that's so interesting because that's what happens. We we form associations and they become beliefs in our subconscious. So we're not when it's subconscious, we're not aware of it. When people say they do shadow work or something's in the shadows, it's not this like dark evil entity or energy per se. It's it's something that's in the shadows of our consciousness meaning we don't see it. So when we do shadow work, all we're doing is bringing something up that was unconscious into the light. Um, so what happens is we have an experience and it forms a subconscious belief. And so many of these subconscious beliefs are formed when we're children, when we do not, when we're not developed, we're not mentally, cognitively developed. Yeah. How do we handle this? Yeah. That, yeah. So mom's trying to kill me with the chocolate cake. <laughs> exactly. So like you make beliefs based on how a child would believe something. And that was the association that that person made. Um, for me, I realized like my biggest um, block just all around was I was nervous that when things got too good, something really bad would happen. Yeah, the other shoe would drop, right? Which is a collective belief. That's oh, a collective yeah. belief in society that I feel very strongly that we are, it would greatly benefit us to transcend. That is a collective belief that's not serving anybody. Right. And if you don't believe it, think of your thoughts and beliefs after 9-11 happened mm -hmm. and the towers went down. Mm -hmm. We're all like, that was such a tra traumatic event. And we're all thinking, okay, well, well what's next? I know mm -hmm. I was, and I'm in Canada, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, but it, you said it's intergenerational. So you're, you know, you're clearing your, you know, your, your, your family of origins mm -hmm. too. And it stops with with you. It's not coming through you. So, you know, some even think that, you know, we're, since if you believe in reincarnation, that we've all been here several lifetimes, uh, that it, it dates back to the uh, the flood in um, Atlantean times or, you know, with Noah's Ark time, you know, if you're. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a lot of my, okay, so this is my belief on reincarnation. Um what you like the trauma that you experienced in past lifetimes or even ancestral trauma too what your family has experienced 
if you it's gone unprocessed, you'll experience it again in this lifetime. Now it's not going to be the exact same way, but you, it will come up as experiences and people will think like, why has this always happened to me? Why did I get this lot in life? Why did all this kind of stuff happen? And the, my perspective is, well, it, it, it's something that you came in here this lifetime to say, I'm going to transcend it. I'm going to work it out this lifetime. Um, one of the most, and I'm not going to go into details because it's, it's something like super personal, but like one of the biggest breakthrough moments I had was in a Reiki retreat that I went to and we did this like journey. So it's just this deep meditation, but you just kind of let your higher self or your subconscious guide you on this journey to where you're meant to go. And I ended up, that was the first time I ever saw past lives. Um, I had no intention of it. I was just going with where the energy took me and it took me back through all these past lives. And then it got to like the core past life where I experienced an incredible trauma, incredible that I came here this lifetime to close out and to work out. And through my experiences, I could see how there are all the different players and all the different events and how things happened that were almost like full circle from that lifetime that I came here to make a different choice this lifetime and to clear the energy this lifetime. Amazing. Yeah. I had something similar for me. It was uh, claustrophobia. And I was doing this treatment, you know, you recall when I was doing the oxygen chamber treatment with the, the toe infection of five years ago, if you can believe. And, um, and I had somebody do some clearing work on me and she, she went back to my past lives and it was that claustrophobia was from then. Mm -hmm. So we have to, I think, you know, for those watching or listening, you have to, you're not just who you are now. You're like, you're bigger. You, you were, you know, the, the, you know, Stephen Covey said, you know, spiritual beings having a human experience. We really are. We're more than just the, here we are today. So we, we really need to say, maybe let go and go, you know, maybe something else is, is at play here. Maybe there's another possibility. What's your take on that as, as a way to sort of, start to heal our trauma or, or be with it. Yeah. Um, so for me, having that perspective, put everything in a, a much um, more enlightened perspective of why things happened to me in my life and how mm -hmm. they happened. And, and it, it, I, um, it helps me release my victim mentality because I know that I chose these things. Like I chose to come here this lifetime to really heal these things and work them out. And that's why I had to go through what I had to go through. Um, however, I know whenever I first um, got the insight, I then identified with that trauma. And I see a lot of people doing this and, and this is not coming from a judgmental place, understanding your trauma and talking about your trauma um, is such a beautiful development that we've made in recent years. You know, in the past, it was, you don't talk about your trauma. You don't talk about your family problems. You don't talk about what you experienced. You just, there's just was so much shame around it. Now we've reached a point where people are openly ex talking about the trauma they experienced and it's very healing. But what I see and what I experienced myself is there then becomes an identification that trauma then becomes your identity. And you, you, that stops the healing journey. It can become healing until you over identify with it, because then that can, that can hold you in that identity. You, you, you form an attachment. You were already attached to the trauma, but you form an attachment as this is the trauma. This is part of who I am. And it certainly is part of your journey and everybody deserves to be honored and respected. Um, but whenever I overly identified with my trauma, then I recreated some of the same things. Once I realized, and this is what I tell people I work with, these cycles that you continue to experience, they are not meant to be repeated. They're meant to be transcended. Once yeah. I realized that, that I have to let go of this identity that I have with all my trauma, I experienced it. Parts of it really sucked and they were not fun. And, <laughs> you know, like it, it, I, I, I can see that I can recognize that, but I also, for me, for my growth and my evolution and to transcend it, I have to detach 
from the energy of my trauma or else the cycle will keep repeating itself. Right. And, and, and it's almost like, okay, I got the lesson. I want to move on now. Thank you. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, in some cases, you know, with this, you know, notion of being authentic about who you are and your story and you repeat your story. My concern there is that you, you're, you're keeping it alive too. Right. And that's kind of what you were alluding to. You want to, you, you, you want to recognize your trauma, but you don't want to keep it alive. And the, 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 you know, you want to sort of, yeah, thank you. Bless you. I got it. I'm choosing differently now. Mm-hmm. Right. Like what you, 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 we don't want to keep that, that, that story going time after time after time. Right. Yeah, exactly. It can be, if you think of your life as a novel, it can be the first part of the novel and that part of the novel can still be there and you can honor that and love yourself for it. But there has to come a point in your journey where you decide that what was in the beginning, a part of the novel is not going to write the second part of your novel. Right. So you're, what I'm hearing is you're giving people permission to really work on their trauma, heal it, recognize it, have an awareness, but don't let it sabotage you. Don't let it you know continue they, like now it's okay got it been there done that got you know went through the pain the the death the 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 wife leaving me with you know uh with the car mm-hmm. um whatever um so so be aware but but you know you can stop it and and you could choose a, a new story you can write your own story yeah paint your own canvas a new canvas right Yeah. Yeah. And it's not that you're suppressing it. It's not that you're denying it. You're honoring it, but you're also honoring yourself enough to say, I deserve better than to be identified with that trauma and continue to live from that, that self-identity. And so it is part of my story and I love myself for going through it. And now I'm choosing something new. Yeah. A couple of other points. How important is it to dialogue on a regular basis with our inner child? Hmm. Um, I think it's pretty important. Um, I think it's pretty important when you notice things that are coming up, especially that are not in alignment with the ideal vision that you have for yourself with who you know, you truly are. Um, if there's that part of you that comes up, that is saying all these limiting beliefs, these old stories, that's maybe like, in more subtle ways, trying to have you procrastinate or not do what you know you really should be doing, or you know what I mean? Like, then it's important to see that that, uh, most likely that is a part of you who is scared, who- um, Stubborn. (laughs) Who is stubborn, who is scared, who is, we, as adults, we are adults, but if you have not integrated your inner child, or if you don't have an awareness of your inner child, our inner child runs the show. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So dialoguing with your inner child, what I like to say to my inner child is you don't have to do this anymore. Like I, like I honor you and I love you. And I know that you're scared and you let that inner child speak. You let that inner child tell you what they're afraid of or why they don't want you to do a certain thing. And then you comfort that inner child and you tell them I'm in charge. Now you don't have to do this. You do not have to run the show. You can just be a child. And there have even been parts of my journey where my inner child has said really mean things to me. And I like a loving stern parent. I say, that's not accepted. You, you won't talk to me like that. I love you still but you won't talk to me like that. Yeah. So I feel it's very important to have that awareness of I, who's running the show. Yeah. I remember years ago, I, was, I knew I was, I was going to get fired from a, a, a position I had. And um, I had to dialogue with my inner child because you know, I was a little afraid, you know, I know lose my income and, oh, here, you know, here I was just getting things up and, and going again after a marriage breakup. And now, I'm, you know, here we are, we, two, you know, two steps forward, one big step back. And my, and, and and I was a little afraid, you know, and what do I tell my family? Of course, there's the shame and the guilt and all that stuff. And there's nothing to feel guilty about. It was just sort of, thank God it happened. And I'll tell you why in a sec. So I dialogued with my inner child and I had a manager and it was a woman and she wasn't the nicest person, truthfully. 
And so my inner child, I was talking to her, we're going to go in tomorrow, we're going to hold our heads high, I wore a suit, and you know, no, I was getting fired, I, I, I did a morning r little jog in my area and everything, and I went in with my best self, uh, putting my best self forward, but you know, it was a little like, this was a bit shocking, right? So my inner child said, okay, so if she's really mean tomorrow, can we pull down our pants and chuck a moon? And I went, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I got fired, which is what I wanted, it was a negotiation. I, you know, my adult self said, this is a negotiation. I want to get fired because I want to go on this unemployment insurance. So I have some money coming in. And then she asked, she said, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, I don't know. I wasn't really planning for this. And she kept me on with 10 clients to coach. So this is April, end of April. And she kept me on for about three more months to come in twice a month to work with my clients that I had, right? But out of that was like total possibility and excitement. I started a radio show that lasted for seven years. I got a training uh, contract that was really good. And that that sort of kind of continued on. And I got another uh, consulting gig uh, in, in by September of that year. So, you know, I just hustled my little uh, butt off with no money, but we made it happen. It was exciting. I love it. So that's that. But the trauma uh, is the guilt, the shame. And so talk to us then real quick as we close. How does guilt and shame also play into it because for me i think that's also too that's a big you know limiting roadblock in front of you you gotta lose the guilt and shame and just say and be okay with yourself and then the last thing i want to talk to you about is self-love being okay with you yeah um shame is just such a like one of the biggest pieces of resistance shame is one of the biggest reasons why people don't go for things that their heart is calling them to towards. Um, it's just this innate sense of shame where people never quite feel enough that it's, and, and it's all of these limiting beliefs that are passed around in our society that has this like innate shame within it. Like, even if things aren't overtly shaming, you can see this, these undertones of shame and how we talk to one another and just like within everything, even like within advertising, like advertising is, is targeted towards you're not enough. Let me, this yes. makes you enough. Same with the coaching profession though. Yeah. Yes. You're, exactly. you're not only six figures or you're, you know, you're, you're not a best selling author. Yeah, exactly. And it's perpetuated through now social media before then, you know, the big thing was like magazines and TV and all that kind of stuff. And now it's social media and there's just shaming everywhere that we internalize and we we internalize it at a young age we internalize it on every level and we internalize the belief that who we are just who we are is somehow wrong and what i believe is each one of us as unique souls um we're like puzzle pieces we're all the beautifully shaped piece of the puzzle that when we all fit together then we form the picture. But what happens when we have shame is we try to shape how we naturally are as that puzzle piece into another shape and nothing fits together. But if we just honored ourselves and we honored who we were, then we would fit and everybody would fit. Um, so yeah, so much of this journey is overcoming the shame and just recognizing the shame. And I feel that shame is anything that tells you what you want to do is either wrong or it can't happen. Um, or you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not, not the kind enough. of person who these, yeah. like who can have this kind of life or be that kind of person. Like yeah. those are all, there's mo more overt, more subtle shaming that we do to ourselves. Um, and whenever you try to really embrace your authenticity, then all the shame does come to the surface for you to see. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, we're, we want to be younger, thinner, uh, faster, whatever, you know, like all, all these ER words. And, 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 and I came out and said, it's just proof that to err, ER, is human. Yeah. To err is human, you know, to err, to is, err human. is human. I love it. I love it. And, and um, 
there's coming from the spiritual community myself, I get triggered by spiritual shaming that Mm -hmm. goes on. Um, I, but I also understand that we are all, how I believe is that um, things that are reflected in our reality are always bringing something within ourselves to the surface. Yeah. Um, So I had somebody comment this comment about how I charge for things on my website and just really said it was like divinely guided that they wrote the comment that how can I consider myself a free person when my things aren't free and all that kind of stuff. It was, is very much spiritual shaming about asking money for, for things, um, which I don't see in other places. You don't go to Starbucks and shame the, the employees at Starbucks for charging you for a cup of coffee. But I do see it in the spiritual community I agree. And, I, and I see people healers and people who really want to do good shaming themselves for, for charging for things. Um, and, but I also recognize that when I received that comment, it did trigger me, but I was like, okay, what shame am I still holding on to within myself around charging money for things? Because there is no shame around that. It's an energy exchange. Yeah. It's there, there's nothing to be shameful of. So it was a chance for me to bring that shame to the surface and help process it. But um, yeah, it's everywhere. The, it's, 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 it's just pervasive. And um, it's, it's one of the biggest things that I feel we need to free ourselves from at this time. Yeah, it, it plays out too, like in the, in the, in the, in the battle of the sexes, you know, men are, if you're not feeling good enough or rich enough, or I got a fast car or whatever, in, 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 on the big level, you know, do we have a, a big enough uh, missile to attack a country, right? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it just perpetuates. Like, why don't we just be all okay with each other, you know? Yeah. Last question is self-love. What do you, what, why do you feel that's important? And, and what do you do around practices you do around self-love? Um, we all deserve to love ourselves, yet... Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many people do you think actually do love themselves, show themselves love, talk to themselves in a loving way? Like it's um, when you approach things from a space of self-love, because we are love at our core, we are love. Mm. Um, You know, when you see, when you see a baby or a puppy or some, a being that's like so pure, you just feel love, right? Like it's just like, and and that's who we are at our core, but like, we've been so hardened over time. Um, and so I, I heard uh, a spiritual teacher say one time that we are meant to love ourselves, how our dogs love us. Oh yeah. You come in and they're like, right. Yep. <laughs> and, and, looking and, yes. Like, and they're not, and you can, You can yell at them and, and they'll still come and they'll, they still love you, right? Like there's nothing that will make a dog not love you. And that's how we're meant to love ourselves. But we weren't taught that we were. And now I think we're starting to teach kids how to love themselves with how things are shifting, but none of us were taught how to love ourselves. No. No. And and yeah, you're right. And it was like, and then we got repeated messages, you know? whether it was overt, small T trauma or big Mm -hmm. T trauma, right? Yeah. Um, You know, we could go on for days on this. And, and, you know, I was thinking, like, I was on a leadership call with uh, Dr. Lance Secretin, who's going to be a guest um, of ours in a few more weeks. He's coming out with a new book on leadership. Um, And we talked about, you know, leadership in the world and, and how shame and, being better than the other person it, it leads to so much strife and wars and, and, and chaos in the world. And it's like, we got to let that go. You know, it's time, you know, everybody's feeling the same pool, the same urge. It's an ache. It's almost an ache. It's an an ache. It hurts. It hurt. It like, it hurts us mentally, physically, emotionally to live the way that we've been living and the way that's been socially accepted. And so it's like now, I mean, that's, that's, that's your higher self telling you there's something not right. You know, it's time to really transcend and heal these things. So you're free from them. Yeah, I agree. Rachel, what a joy. Always a pleasure. 
It is. Um, Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thanks for being here and saying yes. You always say yes, and you're such a joy. And we this this fall is our it would be five years since we met. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, again, a website to to connect with you, uh, the coordinates. I know you got yeah. lots of coordinates. You <laughs> lots of coordinates. TikTok. Are you doing funny things on TikTok or? No, not yet. Maybe I will. Um, so yeah, Reiki with Rachel. Rachel is Reiki is spelled R-E-I-K-I. Rachel is spelled R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Um, so Reiki with Rachel.com is my website. Reiki Rachel is my YouTube, Reiki underscore with underscore Rachel Instagram. And I think TikTok's Reiki with Rachel. Excellent. And yeah, beautiful activations too that you launched this week because spirit talk to you and yes. of course the, the first day of spring and the equinox and then the new moon so uh check out your youtube channel as well and what a joy and a blessing and for those uh watching we'll be back next week with another 26 minutes with and our deeper dive thanks for watching and listening and all that stuff take care mm -hmm.